Um, well, the word Christ, I think it's derived from the word Exlo, what of Christ stands for, or Christ is Antichrist. If Christ is love, and then the Christ you... aspect. Currently, now we have various systems. Uh, Unchangeable, change our rock of Gibraltar, mighty, mighty king. Super, 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 great forever. Super, 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 super. Now create a creator as common by himself. First coming and second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in this Um, Well, the word Christ, I think it's derived from the word Exlo, what of Christ stands for, or Christ is Antichrist. If Christ is love, and then the Christ mm -hmm. aspect. Currently, now we have various systems. Unchangeable, change our rock of Gibraltar, mighty, mighty king. Super, 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 great forever. Super, 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 super. Now create a creator as common by himself. First coming and second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in this holy um, Well, the word Christ, I think it's derived from the word Exlo, what of Christ stands for, or Christ is Antichrist. If Christ is love, and then the Christ mm -hmm. aspect. Currently, now we have various systems. Unchangeable, change our rock of Gibraltar, mighty, mighty king. Super, 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 great forever. Super, 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 super. Now create a creator as common by himself. First coming and second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in this holy um, Well, the word Christ, I think it's derived from the word Exlo, what of Christ stands for, or Christ is Antichrist. If Christ is love, and then the Christ mm. aspect. Currently, now we have various systems. Unchangeable, change our rock of Gibraltar, mighty, mighty king. Super, 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 great forever. Hello and welcome to the BCS Foreigner. It is another winning Wednesday and another time for you to get acquainted with the everlasting teachings of great leader Olumba Olumba Obu. Tonight's topic we will be continuing from our previous edition and apologies to all our consistent and committed viewer viewers and audience who weren't able to get us on screen um, live last week. It was due to the activities of the Peace March, the BCS Peace March at Ondo State, Nigeria. We are happy to be back on your screen and happy to be able to bring the second part of this interesting topic. Hopefully it won't be stretched to a part three. So we are hopeful that we'll be able to exhaust all we have for you today and to be able to answer all your questions welcome and um, today we'll be talking on the topic the second arc 
the part two of that topic if you've not gotten um concepts of the concepts we are trying to you know bring to you tonight i would recommend that you watch the previous episode but today we can you can still you know um, um get acquainted or get all we have for you today it's not going to be it might not necessarily mean you have to go watch it before watching tonight's edition so stay with us shortly after this break we'll be bringing to you our guest who will be talking on this topic i am coin sam and you're watching the bcs foreigner brotherhood of the cross and star bcs is a christ universal spiritual school of practical christianity it is the new kingdom of god on earth which was revealed to prophet daniel as recorded in the book of daniel chapter 2 verse 44 our Lord Jesus Christ also taught us to pray for this new kingdom of God to be established on earth. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 to 13. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is the new city and new Jerusalem from the highest heavens as revealed by John the Divine in Revelations chapter 21 verse 1 to 4. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is the house of God, a place of refuge and a place of salvation, the university of God where God himself is teaching and leading man to the accurate knowledge of truth. In a world filled with borders, Brotherhood of the Cross and Star offers a rare opportunity for people to build bridges. We bring people together from distinctly different cultures with the aim to sidestep social conditioning and create conduit of understanding that makes it difficult to harbor ill will against one another. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is the paradise of God that was lost after the disobedience of our first parents Adam and Eve but it has now been re-established as the congregation of the true children of God who have been redeemed by the Almighty Father through the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ brotherhood is love oneness harmony truth holiness and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. It is a new heaven and new earth where only righteousness is taught and practiced under the divine guidance and leader of the Holy Spirit, the promised comforter, the soul spiritual head, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, His Holiness, Olumba Olumba Obu. Thank you, Father. Welcome back to the BCS Foreigner. Join me as I welcome His Grace Archbishop John Etta Bissau. Peace of the Father. Yeah, perfect peace of the Father, our wonderful presenter, and our beautiful audience. You're yeah, welcome to the second segment of today's episode, The Ark of Salvation. Father bless all of you. Amen. Amen. I do, I like the way you're saying the ark of salvation, but is it going to be just salvation? <laughs> we'll get to find that out. The patriarch Christ Shepherd Chika Waka, welcome. Thank you very much. Peace of the Father, brethren. Thank you, Father, for congregating us today again to advance our knowledge in Him. We are surprised by that. Bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Also, we are thankful to have the physical presence of the patriarch Christ Shepherd, Innocent Omini. Peace of the Father, sir. Thank you very much. And to our highly esteemed audience, it's another opportunity for you to be adequately informed. This topic is very, very important. So, if you are not informed about it, you continue to be deformed. And if you are deformed, sorry, you cannot perform. <laughs> Thank you, Father. It cannot be the patriarch, Ash uh, 
Yeah, Petra Ashbisha. <laughs> <laughs> if he hasn't said that the, the <coughs> form and the informed part of his introduction, thank you so much for coming. And we also have on our Zoom platform all the way from USA, His Grace Archbishop Joseph DK. Peace of the Father, sir. Perfect peace, my beloved sister, my beloved brethren, and the audience. May the peace and blessings of the Father be with us as we share in this wonderful spiritual journey. Amen. 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 All right, let me start with you, Your Grace, Archbishop Joseph D.K. Last week, we had a lot of discussion yet, and uh, we also had unanswered questions from our audience, and specifically remember that of um, Sister Gladys Wingeber, which we would get to answer, but let's go into the topic so that this topic is not going to ride us to part three. The second arc, what is the second arc about? Thank, Thank you very, very much, much in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now and forevermore. Amen. Now, when we talk of a second act, the act naturally is an instrument God used to lift his people out of a horrible situation. You know, in the first act, that was the act of covenant. God used it to lift the souls of his children and guide them through the darkness. Then the ark of Noah, he used it to redeem that generation of every creature. Because when we're talking about the ark of covenant or the redemption, it's not just for man alone. Because the ark of Noah in that ark, he demonstrated it that everything, including the snail, the slug, the tortoise, the slowest animals and beasts and birds, all were lifted up out of the waters into a new life, while God wiped off that generation. Then when our Lord Jesus Christ came, in him was that ark of covenant. That's why he told them, he said the king in, John, in Luke chapter 17, verse 21, when they told him, show us the kingdom of God, he told him the kingdom of God is within you. That kingdom of God at that point in time is our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ is that ark of salvation. Our Lord Jesus Christ is that redeeming point, as he said equally in John 12, verse uh, 32, I think somewhere like that. He said, when I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. What, what is he lifted up at? He lifted up the mortal man from the grave of sin, grave of condemnation, grave of destruction, grave of iniquity unto the righteousness and holiness of God, ascending the soul of man unto purity and perfection and holiness. And he told us that he will come back again. In coming back, the kingdom now that is bringing back, which is now the ark of redemption, the last ark of salvation, which is the new kingdom of God on earth today. He has to come back to gather everything back onto himself as he used the ark of Noah to gather that generation and redeem them. And as Romans chapter eight, verse 19 said that the earnest hope of the creature wait for the manifestation of the sons of God. What is that manifestation? When Christ comes, like he said in first Corinthians chapter 15, he is the first fruits and with him, those that are called at his second coming. So the second act without beating about the bush today is the kingdom of God within man, physically, spiritually, and otherwise. And that kingdom we have beheld, the holy face of Christ we have beheld, the holy face of God Almighty we have beheld. God in the most perfect trinity in unity of purpose have manifested to fulfill the completion of that second act, which was commenced by the ancient of days himself, the spirit of truth, great leader Olumba Olumba Obu, and then instituted the administration and the selector. Because when you call a judge, a judge you see that selects, picks from the, remove the grain from the chaff and bring the grain into the storehouse. The selector of that righteousness, his holiness Olumba Olumba Obu, who has brought in now is administering the second act. So the last act of covenant, the last act of is brotherhood of a cross and star, governed and ruled by the Christ himself, his holiness, Olumba, Olumba, Obu, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For your explanation about the second arc. The second arc is just, just there. A lot of people have been 
talking about and remember the poll from the last episode where we had on Facebook a lot of people suggested that the second arc was an arc of was the second arc of covenant some people said it was the second Noah's arc um, the patriarch crashed innocent dominion what is your opinion on that is the second arc we're talking about tonight the second arc of covenant or the second Noah's arc in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yes, uh, we have uh, heard about the Ark of Noah, the one that Noah built, and uh, with it, eight persons were saved and other creations. We have also heard about the Ark of Covenant that symbolized the presence of God with the Israelites, his people. And uh, we are talking, when we are talking about the second act, the second act now is the fulfillment of God's promise. God promised us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, that his kingdom will come on earth so that his will that is done in heaven will also be replicated and be done here on earth. In Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, we are informed that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, and his Christ will reign forever and ever. So when we are talking about the, the second act, is a fulfillment of the promise of God. It's a divine arrangement of God towards the salvation of his people. And for this divine arrangement of salvation to be actualized on earth, it means that God himself will come down on earth, you know, just like Noah had the grace to construct this ark for the salvation of the people of that time. This time around, the second ark will not be constructed by any mortal, but it will be constructed by God himself. And that is why we are informed in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, that in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up his kingdom on earth, and this kingdom shall not be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break, crush into pieces all other kingdoms, and the kingdom shall stand forever. It is that same kingdom we are informed in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, that when the seven angels sounded his trumpet, there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are now become the kingdom of our God. And as I said, for this kingdom to be actualized on earth, this contract, this project of establishing the kingdom of God, this act eh, of salvation on earth is not given to any human being. It is the prerogative of God himself. And that is why we are informed in Revelation chapter 21, verse 3 down, that I heard a loud voice from heaven saying that the tabernacle of God is now with men. And God himself shall live with men. He will be their God and they will be his people. And God himself shall be their God. And because he's their God, he wipe away tears, all tears of sorrows and tribulations from their eyes. So that is the ark, the second ark we are talking about the Noah's God kind himself. of ark the Noah's kind of ark or the ark of covenant I did not call it Noah's ark no I'm saying the Noah's kind of ark is it like the Noah's kind of you know what no, I'm talking about I did not I did not liken it to the Noah's kind of ark okay the Noah's ark was a construction just like a, a kilo like a, something a ship mm. you know but the second ark we are talking about does not take the, the shape of a Noah's ark or any canoe or any ship. You okay. know? It is a kingdom of God. That is I'm talking about the essence here. Because last week, I'm sorry, you continue your explanation, but I just need some clarity here. Last week, we gave a clear distinction between the ark of covenant and the Noah's ark. So we are talking about the second ark which means that there was a first act which is why i'm asking is it the follow-up to the previous act of covenants 
that was established by Moses or the follow up to the newest kind of ark. I'm not talking about the physical um, uh, structure here. I'm talking about the follow up. What is trying to connote? Is it the um, ark of covenant or the newest ark? I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say, sir. I'm trying to understand. Oh, you don't understand. Okay, finish your explanation. Yes. Then somebody else so, can answer that. The second ark. Hmm. It's not a symbolism, it's not a likeness of Noah's Ark or the Ark of uh, uh, Covenant that was carried by the Israelites. Okay. You know, I have likened it to that is a fulfillment of the promise of God on earth. That God promised to set up his kingdom on earth. Mm. Unfortunately for me and you and the entire world, God who never failed in fulfilling his promise mm. has fulfilled his promise on earth by establishing his kingdom on earth. Permit me to introduce this kingdom to my audience, our audience, mm. that the name of this kingdom and the name of this second Stop. act is Brotherhood of the Cross Stop. and Star. It is that kingdom that is established by God himself because the project of this kingdom is not given to anyone, any mortal. It is God himself who has the blueprint, you know, of the kingdom. Okay, the let's, come, let's come to that because you're taking us to another direction again. Well, I'll come to that. You and um, His Grace Archbishop Joseph DK have made a strong declaration here and your declarations are that the second ark is the new kingdom of God and also brotherhood of the cross, cross and, star. and star before we come to that let's understand the second ark before we understand how it becomes brotherhood of the cross and star um, um, <laughs> your grace <laughs> are, be some, I'll come back to you the patriarch it's okay Please, can you, I don't know if you understood my previous question. You can recap. Yes. Is the second arc we're talking about tonight. We had um, um, cleared out the distinction between the two acts that were mentioned in the Holy Bible, which is the Ark of Covenant, which um, was given to Moses. And we had talked about the essence of the Ark. We had talked about the whole purpose of the Ark and the miracles and the wonders that was associated or that were, that were associated, by the ark. <laughs> our associated with the ark we also spoke about the noah's ark we also talked about the, the ark of yes the essence of it so the second ark we are talking about tonight is it likened to the one of um, moses or that of um, noah in terms of essence not physical structure in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now forevermore. Amen. I will say no. The second act, which I will prefer to call the last act. I would rather prefer to call it the last act. The last act is more of a spiritual phenomenon. The two, the previous act just mentioned, the Noah act, they were physical. The Moses Ark or Ark of Covenant were physical. If you check, I will describe the, the, the Ark of Covenant of Moses, the physic, the wood that was constructed with two you know, rods holding them, and the content where the holy word, the tablet of God, and other holy items were placed inside and was carried by particular tribes, you know, and kept in the holies of holies. While the act of Noah was a big ship, you know, a vessel, like a boat, that was just for a rescue mission, the physical rescue of all the creations of God. But just like my earlier two speakers have just said, His Grace Archbishop Joseph D.K. and the Shepherd Christ Shepherd um, Innocent Domini, the entire nature of the last act, I call it the last testament, I call it the third covenant, like they have earlier described, the new kingdom of God on earth. It is completely different from the other act, because this other last act here has those is basically 
based on righteousness, purity, holiness, sanctity. The Bible describes it as a new world. In short, Revelation 21 describes it as a new heaven and a new earth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this new, this last act is personalized. It's a personality. It's the Holy Spirit manifested in human form. That is the clear distinction between this act and the other two acts. In short, if I may, may throw it more light the right way, uh, we can call the other acts as the old acts. Because if you go in the Bible, we have the Old Testament, mm. which is the era of Genesis to Malachi, the era of Moses, the era of Elijah, the era of Noah, the era of Abraham. That is a, like the old ark. Krishna gave credence to, I uh, could call it the second ark, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, who came now to face away the old world, the Old Testament, which is the New Testament, which began from Matthew to Jude. And he also prophesied and also told us about the manifestation of the last ark, which he described as the last testament, as he quoted last time in that Revelation chapter 11, verse 19. This last testament, this last act, is mm. what we also describe as the everlasting gospel, personal, personified as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, His Holiness, Olombo Olombo Bu, collaborating with God Shepherd uh, Innocent, I've just said, and His Grace Abishop Judike, have just said, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you so much, Your Grace. Um, the Patriarch, Ash, um, the Patriarch Chika Waka, do you agree with what has been said so far? If we are saying the second arc we're talking about tonight has no connection to the previous acts that were mentioned in the Bible, then what is the first arc? Or is there a mistake in the topic of tonight, the second arc? In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now and forevermore. Amen. I thank the Holy Spirit for this development. Because it is chiseling this topic to its exact desired knowledge. I thank the Father for using my brothers to project this essence. You see, when we say first act, second act, 90 arc, 1 million arc, it will be difficult for us to arrive at the beginning of arc. The arc is simply the word of God. The word of God is God himself. But God follows man according to the level of his spritual understanding. understanding. When in the dark, he will physicalize it, like he gave them the dimension Moses the dimension of that first act. But the important thing is that down the line he said, and you will put the throne of mercy where the two angels' wings will cover it. And I will come into that ark and speak with you. What is inside that ark that will speak to Moses? Two tablets of the laws. What is the two tablets of the law? The word of God, instructing, guiding, and he expects us to obey. When he physicalizes, it's just that our spiritual understanding has not met that level of understanding him. But if we understand that God is spirit, essentially, in heaven, where he is with all his angels, there's no these physical things. So the moment we understand that Ark is God himself, the kingdom of God, that will not be difficult to say first Ark or second Ark. Because if you take care, do you know that Moses, when he was a little child, was put in an Ark and put in the water? He said God himself was in there. Who was Moses, by the way? Moses was a representation of God. And that is why he said, um, when he came as a, what do you call, um, a chiselic, and uh, Abraham gave him tithes. And he said, for you it's okay. But your children, children, children of their children, children, will suffer this consequence. But later, for 400 years, at the hands of the Egyptians, and after that, I will come and deliver you. Melchizedek has now 
that changed to Moses. See God doing different things at different times, depending on the level of the spiritual understanding of a dispensation on its people. So the act is God, the work of God, the word of God, like my brother said. In every time, he fiscalized it because of the low level of spiritual understanding of the people. But now that the consummation of his manifestation and power has come, he lets us to know that his spirit. We don't need to go to Jerusalem or the mountain to serve him. So the act of God is God, the word of God, the power of God, the presence of God. In fact, the word of God, which is God himself. Now, if you want to come down, I like to think of it like that, so I don't have to struggle or try to argue, because it's so clear. Now, you can say the second act could be likened to the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's the same Christ that was the tablet that he gave Moses, that was put in that physical act. And now that he has trained us dispensationally through different manifestations, now he has qualified us a little bit to understand him spiritually. So we don't need to go back to struggle of what he means. Because he now, as the Holy Spirit dwells in us. Now that second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, which we call the second act, is God Almighty himself fulfilling the promise of his coming. So you can, last time we agreed that if you want to physicalize that physical act, you can call it um, this 34 amber where the Father has instituted his throne. Where you can go 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock, we have the service, say, I'm going to the ark, I'm going to the hall, I'm going to the temple to listen to God. But because. Or better. Or better. But now because he is spirit, you can go there like a new convert or somebody who is not quite educated spiritually say okay let me go and see papa this morning devotion and he gets there and papa is not there it will be difficult for him for his faith to be solidified except when he sees him but when you see him mm. he does not solidify your faith so he wants us to know that god is spirit essentially he is the ark he is the temple he is the kingdom that he has come remember like last time when they were coming out from Caesarea, his disciples say, Oh, Master, look at this magnificent building, this beautiful building. He say, See, in a short while, a stone will not be upon the other, that he will destroy it and rebuild it in three days. You see, he was speaking to the Pharisees and Sadducees spiritually, that they were understanding him physically. That is the problem we have today. Okay. That's the point. So, the kingdom of God, the second act, it has been act before the manifestation of existence. That is God, his instruction, his presence, his uh, powers. In the name of the Lord of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, the patriarch, for that um, very nice explanation. All right, with that, uh, I think that's sorted out about the essence of the second arc. Let's move over to His Grace Archbishop Joseph DK. Now to your clear decor uh, declaration you made um, during your response to the previous question. You said, Brotherhood of the Crescent Star is the second arc. Now that we are having a bit of struggle accepting if it's the second arc or opt-in's arc or a million <laughs> number <laughs> a time of arc or something, um, Brotherhood of the Crescent Star is an arc. I'd like to know why you think Brotherhood of the Crescent Star is an arc. Thank you for that beautiful question. You know, like my brothers have said, particularly Petra Kreischer Pachika, it is symbolical because what is the, pro, the job of the ark? The first ark of Moses was lifting the tablets of the covenant. The ark of Noah was lifting the children of God out of death and doomed by the waters. And like you say, say through the process of lifting up, they bore the chosen, the believing out of and over the water, signifying death that water choking something that chokes life, to a land covenanted to the faithful by God, a land symbolizing eternal life. You see, in doing so, the act fulfilled God's covenant. That is a symbol of triumph. Now, brotherhood of the cross and star, what do we call it? Brotherhood means God and everything that he has created. The cross was the symbol of the purification, 
the symbol of the process, the wilderness, into the glory, the covenant of the star, where the Christ rules and reigns supreme. Now, from all lands and climes, all religions, all traditions, all cultures, any child of God seeking for salvation, the Spirit directs them to the brotherhood of a cross and star, which is the physical, like Brachika said, symbolized, physicalized act of that covenant. It's not particularly just 34 Ambo Street, but everywhere in everything in all creations. So every entity, every being, every creature that is seeking for redemption or salvation is channeled into the brotherhood. So in this last dispensation, like he said in Luke chapter 17 from 25, he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the son of man when he shall manifest. This was a futuristic prophecy given by the son of man is in a particular dispensation bearing the name Jesus Christ from Nazareth. So he was giving a futuristic manifestation after he has finished the mission of redemption. He said, they sowed, they, lived, they married and gave him marriage until all everything entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed the other lot. What does this symbolize? In the world today, there are religions, there are churches, there are movements, esoteric orders, exoteric orders, metaphysical orders, mystical orders, practicing so many spiritual or whatever things they think they know. But this ark now is on earth moving. The everlasting gospel of the Redeemer is being projected to them, fulfilling Revelations chapter 14, verse 6. The redeemed and the chosen are hearing and coming in, receiving the seal, which is the baptism, and the seal of the living God, awaiting the hour of identification and conclusion of all things. The unbelieving are living their normal things, making a mockery of the elects. You're worshiping man. You're wasting your time. If you come to my own side of the ethnic divide in Nigeria, they say you are wasting your time worshiping Calabar man. You see how they, how they denigrate it. But as they worshiped in the time of Noah, when Noah was building the ark and they say he was a drunkard who can even lie naked in the bar. But when the time came, that drunkard became the source of salvation by gathering all the elects of that generation, including men and beasts and birds into the ark of covenant. I mean, Ark of Redemption. Now in this age again, that Ark is back on earth, but it's no longer made of wood. But it's an Ark encompassing the entire creation with only one passcode for entrance, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and receiving of the sacred name of God, Olumba, Olumba, Obu, spiritually upon your forehead. And on that hour, when the second lifting up shall come, all the souls, all these elects of God being lifted shall be lifted up by his grace through his divine process into this divine kingdom. The process is already in motion. It's not yet to be because everything written about it has come to pass. The physical tabernacle has been destroyed even in the time of AD 78. So this act now, Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, is the last hope of man. It is the contact point for redemption and it is the ultimate destination for every elect of God that is praying for redemption, hoping for redemption, aspiring for the kingdom of God. So waiting for it to come in the sky is no longer in question. Petra Christ Shepard, Nick, Innocent has already given the portion. Revelations 11, 15. Say when the kingdom, when the seventh angel sounded, there were great voices in heaven that said, the kingdoms of God have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And Revelation 10 verse 7 said, when the seventh angel shall begin to sound, then the mystery of God is finished, should be finished. So there's nothing like second gazing. It is both metaphorical and a physical act, act. And it is now established in our time. Evidences across the globe have shown it from different lands and clients. They said the God of heaven and earth, Olumba, Olumba, Obu, has come with his kingdom. And it is the only hope and the last hope for man. So that is that ark man is looking for. And the kingdom of God, as we promise, is now with us. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Bishop Joseph D.K., back to the studio of the Patriarch Christ Shepherd. Um, innocent to many, you also declared brotherhood of the crescent star as an arc of this time. And I want to refer back to the question asked by Sister Gladys Onyebo 
during the last episode she said what is the essence of the second arc let's just say the current arc and then is it symbolized in the old covenants the previous covenants that were mentioned in the holy scripture and its relative relevance to our present generation thank you very much in the name of our lord jesus Christ. amen uh, it's a very important question um, we say that uh, the second act is uh, the likeness of the, the ark of noah this is a picture of the ark of noah when Noah was constructing that ark People were calling him names. They were thinking that he was drunk. You know, he preached for 120 years. The people did not heed. In fact, they turned that uh, construction of the ark to a lavatory where they put their feces, they use it as their toilet, you know. And as they were doing so, one day an epileptic uh, person fell into the feces. Mm. And when he came out of the thesis, he got hold. He was healed. Hey, no one's ark can heal. So all the diseased people went to this ark, you know, and they commandeered the thesis. So, you know, some of them hurt it, you know, took it and hide. As we used to have artificial scarcity of uh, fear, fear of well. you know. So when they are scraped, they use their nails and this, and scrape that uh, feces, uh, feces, you know, and hold it. So when people have problem, come, oh, I have a quantity of the feces. <laughs> <laughs> they started trading on it. Magic substance. Yes. Today we liken brotherhood of the cross and star mm. to the ark of Noah, you know. The last episode we talk about the narrow way or the narrow, narrow gate, gates. you know. Mm -hmm. Brotherhood of the cross and star as a second act is that narrow way that only few people find. The broad way, you know, is there. Many people find that broad way is the broad way of enjoyment. The broad way of, uh, you know, things of the world that you do, that you like, you know. But brotherhood of cross and star is a narrow gate and the second act. Because in this kingdom, we have the supernatural teacher, the one who established that kingdom. And we have the first step to God. We have the second step to God. We have the third step to God and the fourth step to God. By the time you go into these uh, uh, steps, you know, some people will find it very, very difficult. Just like the kingdom of God we pray for, that kingdom come, that will be done in earth as, as it is done in heaven. Nobody knew the content of the kingdom and the nature of the kingdom. Nobody knew that it's a kingdom that you stop eating meat and fish. Nobody knew that it's a kingdom you walk barefoot. Nobody knew that, that the nature of that kingdom you will be knocking your head. Nobody knew that the nature of that kingdom is a kingdom of righteousness and not the kingdom of uh, sin. So if human being knew that that kingdom, the nature of that kingdom, is a kingdom of entire righteousness, nobody would have prayed for it. Nobody would have prayed for the kingdom of God to come. So the kingdom has come now. It has been established on earth. And the intricacies of this kingdom, it is not easy. If somebody knew that you will stay for three days and three nights without food and water in the kingdom of God, nobody will pray for the kingdom of God to come. So that is why the name of this kingdom is Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. The cross is the middle stage, you know. It is one thing for you to identify yourself as a member of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, which the brother means love. Uh, that binds all creation together. The cross is when you begin to practice, you know, the heart teachings of the Holy Spirit. Like the Father told us that, when people used to say that brother who drinks blood, and we get angry, 
that you don't know what they are saying. And the people themselves, they don't know what they are saying. That when our Lord Jesus Christ told the people, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you shall not enter the kingdom of God. That the people say, how can this man give us his flesh to eat and his blood to drink? And the supernatural explain it that eating the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ is listening to his words. And then by the time you practice, you know, accommodated only one individual, Moses, was pushed around by the waves until the princess of Egypt discovered him. The Ark of Covenant that was carried about by the Israelites was carrying the presence of God and the commandments of God. The second act we are talking about now is the information we have in Revelation chapter 21 that the, the, the God, that God himself has become man. It is also a confirmation of 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 that without controversy great is the mystery of godliness. God is manifested in the flesh. flesh. You see? So when we are talking about the second act, the second act is the entire presence of God. God gave himself a mission to come down and do what? According to uh, Genesis chapter 49 verse 10, that he will come and gather his people. What, what is the essence of gathering his people? He's gathering his people for salvation. So in this case, in this present arrangement, just like my brother has said, it is an act that is not made in, uh, uh, in a constructed with a human, ma uh, I mean, uh, physical materials. You know, it is the kingdom of God. You know, which our Lord Jesus Christ said, that kingdom is found within you. You know, it is also a kingdom of God that God Himself has come to establish. You know, and live physically with men and um, be with his people and change them because the essence of the act, the main mission of the act is to save, you know, salvation. So the kingdom of God is a kingdom of salvation. So like the previous act was able to accommodate Like the previous eight act people, that performed the act work of a salvation. The other salvation. one accommodated just one person. This one this has This one accommodates the children of God. That, that multitude that Shiloh was coming to gather, mm. you know, is gathering them for this present act. Thank you so much, the patriarch, for that explanation. Um, your the patriarch, Christ uh, Shepherd, <laughs> Chikawaka, I'd like you to answer related to what the patriarch have said concerning brotherhood. You know, more explanation on brotherhood being the arc and the essence of the second arc. I'd like to you to answer the remaining part of Sister Gladys' question as its relevance in this present generation. Why was it? Is there a reason why it is being established at this time, this point in time? Yes. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Yes, indeed. That's the fulfillment of the scriptures. It was prophesied that at this time, this particular period, that God will establish his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Train them, cleanse them, fortify them with the power of the Holy Spirit so as to make them qualify into the ark. So it's not, um, it's not against happen, happenings. It's, it's not a happenstance. Because this is the time that God said that he will come and establish his kingdom. In Daniel 2.44, Daniel 2.44, it was prophesied. The spirit of Christ is the spirit of prophecy because he is the word. Whatever he says is God himself and must come to pass. So that is why he said, in the days of this kingdom, he was pointing to a dispensation, a mm. period, a time, in answer to Sister Gladys' question, why is it why is now. it that now? Why is mm -hmm. it now? It is simply fulfilling the prophecies of the scriptures. He said, At the days of these kings, the God of heaven 
will come and establish his own kingdom. And it will break into pieces all the kingdoms. And it will not be left to all the people. Yes, now we have kingdoms beyond sovereign nations. We have fiscal kingdoms. We have spiritual kingdoms. We have merchandise kingdoms. We have kingdoms of thoughts. Yes. But that kingdom that was promised in Daniel 2.44 is God himself coming down to consume negative thoughts in man. Look at what is happening in Russia today. One would have thought that first World War, Second World War, we are the worst human beings can witness. But today we are seeing a horrible thing. And um, the, the players, as we can see so far, do not have any sense of remorse to withdraw. Now, your people on the other side, they know what it will mean for them to try to stop what uh, uh, President Putin is doing. They know. But now, because the prophecy must fulfill, the thought of, let me not do this so that this will not happen, because the, the whole scenario is showing, pointing towards a third world war. So far, let us take a picture of what is happening in uh, Ukraine. Look at people, look at houses, people, <clears throat> everything damaged without any sense of thinking. But I tell you that these are also fulfillments of the end time. According to First Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, things like this must come to pass. So that, Father said last Sunday, say, peace has come. Sorry, whether Putin likes it or not, he, the king of peace and the prince of peace, has declared that peace must come because this is the time that that peace is prophesied to come and he is that peace and he saying who God is without anything it is not any bad thing because the scriptures must fulfill now if God leaves the kingdom or rulership of heaven and earth to you what will you do when you get sick what will you do when you walk for uh, eight hours and you are tired what will you do to your enemies? Can you forgive? You will just destroy every, everybody. But God, he is God. The other time we are discussing God uh, above. Above God. gods. God above, over above, gods. Over gods, very good. What makes him God is that he can exercise love, patience, tolerance. No man on earth can do that. That's why he's God above all other gods. Putting on himself now is stationing himself as a god. Has he been able to forgive the Ukrainians? We thought that Soviet Union era has passed and God. And now this is the Holy Spirit era now to tell us, bring us down from our high horses. Give us the spirit of humility. But look at some people now are playing God. I should be wasting thousands of lives like that. Lives like that. Look at the people, old women, young people, children being terribly asked away from the house with terrible bombings. Where? How? If the man is playing God, is he God? He cannot be God. God, God is love. It is that same God that is love that is in brotherhood of the cross and star mm. who has established the kingdom of God. When there's confusion all over the world, when people are happy, look at the churches, by the way. The kind of preachings they preach there, you will tell you that there's something behind their mind. That's an ulterior motive. Mm -hmm. I can pass out now, leave the preachings of salvation, and now flouting his wealth. You are attracting people to look at word rather than bringing yourself down, trying to be holy. So all this were like, all of these are just in fulfillment, fulfillment of God the bless end you. times. End time. And so all this must happen for they the end time, happen. including the second ark. It must also be established sure. to lead us to the end Amen. time. Okay, thank you so much, the patriarch. It come, brings me to my next question, um, Your Grace. You know, um, previously, let's go back to Noah's ark. Although you have been of the opinion that this uh, second ark has no relation to the previous acts, but also you've also established here that there is a little bit of connection to the other acts in terms of essence. Now let's go back to the Noah's ark. Noah was given an instruction to build an ark, 
and at the end people did not listen to him except eight people and some animals he was able to gather at the end of the day there was flood who uh, a great flood that you know overtook the world destroyed a lot of things and only the people who were within the ark were saved if we replace it to we've replaced that phenomenon to what is happening now can i say that brotherhood of the cross and star is like that ark per se which is why i asked my previous question that ark you identify belong to bcs or brotherhood of the cross and star for salvation to be granted unto you if you don't belong like the people of that generation of noah who did not identify with noah if you don't identify does this lead me to saying the fulfillment of the end time which is destroy i don't know how the end will come to what the end time is all about does it lead me to conclude that the people who do not identify with this ark brotherhood of the cross and star are on their way to damnation in the name of His Holiness, Olumba Olumba Amen. In the power of His Holiness, Olumba Olumba Amen. Now and forevermore. Amen. Yeah, my heart is beaming with joy. Why my heart is beaming with joy? Because uh, the privileged knowledge, you know, of being a citizen of the ark. Because our Lord Jesus Christ had never made a mistake. Just like what my brother Andrew said, I've just quoted. As was in the days of uh, Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. What happened in the first days of Noah? He spent 120 years preaching. Even went to his own in-law and told him about this ark, this boat of salvation. People mock and jeer at him, even when they were signed to show that this ark was not honorably. And the kingdom of God, just like what my brother have just said, it has never been a periwinkle business. It has never been an easy business. Otherwise, if you're just going to buy and sell, like going to the market to buy and sell, then everybody will jump into the ark. Then the saying that many are called, but few are chosen will not be there. Because the, the, the last ark, the last testament, the third covenant, the new kingdom of God, if you look at the characteristics of the new kingdom of God, the owner of the kingdom himself have toiled for physical 100 years. From 1918, the owner of the kingdom have been on the physical earth, teaching, trying to grow man, to transform man in fulfillment of the prophecy of the of the of our Lord Jesus Christ. That when there are so many things to tell you, precisely John uh, 16. Verse 12 and 13. I have so many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. It was very difficult for them because they were in a, a kindergarten stage, having graduated us from that act of the second testament to the last act. This is the last testament. This is the final examination. Otherwise, the, the revelation of uh, Revelation chapter 20. From verses 11 through 15, the white throne judgment will not have any essence. The white throne judgment, and which is also give credence to the to the last death, the final death, or the second death. If there's no death, then the kingdom is of no essence. But the sense of the second death, the sense of judgment, is to filter disobedient from mm -hmm. obedient children. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who are the obedient children? Just in the case of Noah, these are those who are prepared to get the baptism of water and of the Holy Spirit. Not just shouting uh, in the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. No! That is the second testament. The first testament led credence to the second testament, and the second testament led credence to the last testament. And in this last testament, you must get the teachings of the everlasting gospel. Are recorded in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. The first step, the second step, and the third step, all these steps, you must put them into practice. My friend says, his, his wife I wanted to marry, when I went to Portaco two days ago, I met one of our brother, brother Mama, that the wife wanted to marry from other third churches. When the mother of the wife came and saw them, he said, look at Mama, moving barefooted. Mother, the mother put her head on the head, said, please, forget about that man. Just only moving barefooted. People will even 
abuse you, will look at you as a demented fellow. But this is the narrow gate. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Joe wearing this sultan. Who will make a caricature of you? Then why are you wearing sultan? Are there no clothes in the, in the other clothes for you to wear? But these are all the narrow gates. Even for us to believe that God is a personality. God is a human being. Contrary to the world, the world expectation. That God is a spirit. That we are worshipping another human being. Calabar God. But these are all the narrow gates. So, refuse her, like the Jews in the wilderness. They were being asked to lift up their face and look at the serpent, the copper. And they refused. That was the narrow gate. So today that we are in the last testament, the owner has set, you know, has set the stage. The stage for us to hear all these words, put them all into practice, believe in him, and love. It is the hallmark. It is the credential. It is the identity. Peace. If you don't love, if you are not ready to follow peace with all men, like my brother said about Ukraine. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14, follow peace with all men. And without holiness, nobody can enter the last act in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So these are all the credentials. Shouting Jesus from left and center can never take you into the last testament. Cannot take you into the last act. But the last testament is for us to follow the sheep sheepishly. He has brought a blueprint and he has opened a blueprint. He has opened the university. Christ preacher school of practical Christianity. It's not Jesus in theory, but Jesus in practice. If all of us then are ready to follow this narrow gate and to follow the, the lamb, which is the ark, which is the king of kings and the lord of lords, his holiness, Olumbo, Olumbo, boom. This is the last ark. And it has a, an interrelationship with the first and the second ark. The first act was the same message. Come and enter. People refused and they perished. And the last, the second act, the act of covenant, which is Moses. Keep the laws. I think though you are going, <laughs> if you say the act of Moses yes. is the second act. Now you are making this one be the second And it's the last testament. I have a question. You are being very emphatic and yes. very, very bold in proclaiming that this is the last testament the last is there any indication that this is the last yes why what, I say it's where, the last where, where, because if you look at the prophecies of uh, let's look at the prophecies of uh, moses in roman chapter 10 verse 19 through and 20. Mm. moses took the israelites that they have derailed and god would take the kingdom from them and give to a foolish a nation as they have made it more boldly but this were all prophet but what about the second act himself? The second testament of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I have so many things to tell you. John chapter 16, verse 12 through 13. But you cannot bear them now. How be it? When I go, I shall come back. But when I'm coming back, one, I shall not come in Israel again. Because Israel, the land of Israel, from Matthew chapter 23, from 37, he said the land of Israel is what? A cursed nation. It shall remain desolate. Why? Because Israel believed that God cannot have a son. And until I say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Israel are not prepared to say so. And so, what is the foolish nation? The foolish nation is the nation of the Edomites, the Gentiles, the black race. This is what Isaiah saw in Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah saw our Lord Jesus Christ, the last testament, the third covenant, coming from Edom, a black nation. A foolish nation and ask who is this house coming from Edom? Like uh, you, uh, the question they asked before, what make us to justify that BCS is the last testament? Because all the prophecies have been fulfilled. Alrighty. If you go around the whole world, okay. there is no nation, there is no kingdom that says that God has physically been made manifest. If you go to the Pope, you go to the bishop, nobody knows even the uniform of God. But all these things, the uniform of God, which is red, are all manifested here. The new name of God, if you go to the entire nation, no, no angel, no spirit is called the king of kings and the lord of lords. It's made manifest here. Okay. If you go to the entire Israel, nobody has the insignia. Oh, oh, oh. If you go to Mecca, in their holiest of holies, they have oh, oh, oh. They believe in Astra. If you go to Vatican City, Roman, the first, uh, the Roman Catholic, the first church, they have oh, oh, oh. Now, in the seven continents of the world, scientists, astrologers, philosophers have all tried to research 
And we have come to discover that this OOO is domiciled in a foolish nation called Africa. Why is Africa called a foolish nation? Because of Esau. Esau sold his bare rights because okay. of the player of food. And that's why they call the descendant of Esau a foolish nation. And that foolish nation is you and I, the Gentiles, the Blackley, the Edomites. In okay. the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Your Grace, for that well-detailed explanation. You're still watching the BCS Foreigner, and it is an interactive show where we also would take your questions that you need, you know, clarity on, especially on this topic, the second arc. You've heard all the guests have to say concerning it. We will be taking a short break, and when we come back, we are going to find out more if truly this is the last testament although all uh, his grace archbishop etabisong have said points out that as indications towards the last testament the end times but would there still be more end times that we'll find out and more on the program the bcs for now we'll be right back shortly one, 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 one family. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star River States cordially invites the host of heavens and dwellers on earth to the celebration of the 2022 Peace and Unity Feast, holding on Monday, 14th to Sunday, 20th of March 2022, at Community Secondary School, Ibaka, in Okrika, with the theme Peace and Unity, Our Strength in Diversity. Slogan One Rivers, One People, One People, One Rivers. The theme song for the event is We Are One. One in the Lord with the authority in Galatians 3 verse 28 which says there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither bond nor free there is neither male nor female for ye are all one in Christ Jesus highlights of the event include peace and unity touch movement flag of ceremony evangelism inter area singing competition paper presentation awards sporting activities free medical outreach and lots more come and receive Receive the blessings of the Holy One, the Mighty in Battle, the Ancient of Days, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, since Holiness, Olumba Olumba Obu. Thank you, Father. Announcers, Petra Christ Shepherd, Soki Priye, Wokoma, State Administrator, His Grace, Act Bishop, King Tuado Wiko, Chairman, Central Working Committee, and Bishop Gabriel Maskew, Chairman, Media and Publicity Subcommittee. Welcome back to the BCS Foreigner. Yes, you are on to the second segment where our phone line will be available for you to call in and ask your clarity seeking questions. The number to call is plus two three four seven zero four four eight zero two eight eight three. It is displayed boldly on your screen. You can also go to our YouTube platform, BCS Starcrest TV International, to drop your questions and they will all be acknowledged as we are on the live program. The topic of discussion again is the second arc and this is the phase two of this discussion. Now His Grace Archbishop John Etabisong said and he was very, very emphatic about it that this is the last testament the last arc and the last phase of mankind living in a world as this if i can say that leading to the end time my question now is to his um, his grace archbishop joseph dickey is it true or do you share in the belief that this is the last um, testament because of the fulfillment of the scriptures in the um, first and um, the two testaments that were given the first testament and the second testament that is the old and new testaments of the holy scriptures is it because of the fulfillment of the scriptures the revelations in those scriptures that makes this um, um, generation the last generation the last testament and the end time is it because of that then if it is if at all you i agree to that conception what is the essence of the everlasting gospel of the leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the sole spiritual head of the universe, that is out in various volumes? We were of the opinion that this everlasting gospel were to bring out new revelations, new prophecy for the incoming generations. Are we 
making or are we having any sense or error in reasoning at the moment? Thank you very much. I love that beautiful question, you know? One, if we go through the scriptures, in Matthew 24, our Lord Jesus Christ gave the disciples a directional statement, not just a response. When they asked him, he said, they showed him the magnificent temple of Solomon and said, Master, look at this beautiful temple. He told them, there's not one block or one stone that is left on top of the other that will not be broken down. He gave them instances of what we are witnessing, the wars, the rumors of wars, pestilences, pandemics, and everything. And he told them that all these are the beginning of sorrows. Now he promised he's going to come back. Remember, it's written in the book of in the Psalms, I mean, the, that he will not open his mouth to speak except in parables. Meaning that what he came to teach us, we are all encoded in mysteries and they needed decoding because without them being decoded, we will not be able to comprehend this message as we'll be able to put them into practice. Most of his statements were in parables, in allegories, in anecdotes. And in of each of them, he give them information that by the time you start decoding is so huge, but condensed in a precise manner because his mission was not really to groom us in the essence of understanding every mystery, but just to perform one critical assignment, to remove the curse of death, break the yoke of condemnation, remove the veil of separation, and rebuild the bridge that leads man to the presence of God. That is why he told us that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through him. Earlier, Archbishop Brother Bison made a reference to John chapter 16 from verses 12 to 14, when he said, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot understand them, but happy it when he, the spirit of truth, come. He will lead man into all truth. And not only that, say, he will show you things to come because he shall receive from him and show to us. Our Holy Father, leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the promised comforter, the supernatural teacher, in his statement, which he called my mission, he said, he did not come to die for us. Our Lord Jesus Christ has come to do that. He's not a prophet nor is he any of those things, but his mission is to teach man, understand it now, teach man, groom man and prepare man and bring us to the standard required by God so that on the day of reckoning will not be found one thing. And what is that teaching of man? Christ said he has many things to tell us, but we cannot understand it. With his coming now, he has now broken down the parables the allegory, the anecdotes, all the coded mysteries. Now, he has decoded them and brought them in simplified manner that even a child will be able to understand and appreciate it. And then if we say we cannot practice it, it's not because we are not properly taught. It is because we simply refuse to abide because when a good teacher teaches the student, he teaches them well that they will be able to follow him. And not only did he come to teach, he led us on the path. That is why he is the leader. Now, all these compilations and condensations of all his teachings is what is called the everlasting gospels, which is the last testament. And that statement in Revelation 14, verse 6, let me read it straight from the scriptures, was very descriptive. It said, and I saw another, another angel fly in the midst of heaven, bearing the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, and verse 7 said, saying, with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea, and the formations, and the fountains of water, sorry. Now, what does that mean? The everlasting gospel is now the compilation of all the analogies, analysis, and explanations of the teachings of Christ to bring it to our comprehension and understanding, because there is no more time. We are living in the last dispensation. And he that has the spirit of prophecy has already prophesied this hour, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. So the everlasting gospel is the last testament. It is the final decoding of the will of God for humanity to guide us. It is the law of the new dispensation. 
that if we follow it, we will not miss our part. And I'll give you instances. When Mangosutu Buteleji Gacha came to see the father in 34 Ambo Street, he made a statement that the everlasting gospel is his guide in everything he does because it brings the truth to the simplest understanding. And one time, governor of Anambra state of Nigeria, Okwesile, um, um, Okwadike, I've forgotten that his real name. Maybe Brochika will help me out. He told us when we went to Hanez Ndibo secretary to seek for an audience with them, he told the, the administrative secretary, say, please attend to this young man. That I remember when their leader Olumba, Olumba Ogu came to my office when I was governor of Anambra state. And he gave me a copy of the everlasting gospel. And that book has been my guide in everything I do. I read it in the morning before I start my day and I go back to it in the night to guide my step. So the everlasting gospel now has become the statute and the code and the guide of the last dispensation. It is the, the law of the new age. So there's no book that will come after it because in it, the God of heaven has laid his mind plain the rule of a new kingdom of God and the order of righteousness that we must follow. And if we follow that order of righteousness, certainly we'll make the kingdom of God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, Your Grace, the Archbishop Joseph. Thank you for that insight. And back to the studio, the Patriarch Christ Shepherd, Innocent Tumini. From all that have been said, um, the Patriarchs are, is it that when um, you are in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, your salvation is guaranteed, being that it is the Ark and you've identified with the Ark? Very wonderful question. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, uh, let us start it this way. We have uh, presented Brotherhood of the Cross and Star as the narrow gate, not the broad gate. In the world, if you tell somebody, I am a member of a Brotherhood or Lumba, they run away from you. If you advertise yourself, I am from so, 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 religion, not a brotherhood, ah, you are their friend. It goes on like that, even in, the, in employment, in whatever. Now, it is one thing to be a member of brotherhood, or for you to come into brotherhood. We are baptizing into brotherhood. It's like a child who gains admission into the university. It is not your, admission, your admission into the university does not guarantee you your degree because there are courses you have to follow. You have to read your books. You have to follow and do your assignments. You have to write your projects. You have to write your thesis. In case of masters, you have to write your dissertations. You have to do all that to fulfill everything, the, all the ramifications of the academics, that will finally guarantee you maybe first degree or doctorate degree. That is why earlier we mentioned first step to God, second step to God too, and the third step to God. In Brotherhood of Christ and Star, the instrument of salvation is the word of God. Our Father does not preach prosperity Come into brotherhood so that you will be rich, you will be uh, prosperous, you know, and receive the key of prosperity. But indirectly, invariably, prosperity is found in the words that the Father preaches. That is, if you practice those teachings, they are key to salvation, key to prosperity, key to peace. So, in a nutshell, your membership of brotherhood of the cross and star as the kingdom of God, as the last uh, covenant, as the last act of salvation, your member, mere membership does not guarantee you salvation if you ignore the cross. That is why the name of the kingdom is brotherhood of the cross. You must carry the cross and follow our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and when you carry the cross and follow our Lord Jesus Christ, then you are guaranteed the star. The star is the star of glory, the star of peace, the star of uh, whatever the blessings uh, of God. So it's like in unto um, humanity has a lot of problems. Humanity has a lot of problems, ranging from childlessness, 
homelessness, ranging from sicknesses, penury, poverty, causes and, and yokes. And then the people of the world, they know, or let me say, the devil knows the problems of human beings. You now design something. Come here, I will give you uh, children. I will give you prosperity. I will give you this. I will give you that. You know, because those are the things the human beings are in need of. But God does not advertise his kingdom in mm -hmm. that way. You know, God tells you, one, to enter this kingdom, you must baptize. You know, do you know how many people will have come into uh, the kingdom of God, brotherhood of Christ and Stan? But they will tell you, I have baptized uh, in my church. I have baptized here. Look at the scenario of uh, Naaman, the warlord. You know, he was informed by his servant. There is a God, our God, that can solve this uh, problem and can cleanse you of uh, this leprosy. You know, and ne uh, Naaman said, if it is true, if it is true that your God can solve this problem. Our prophet, the prophet of our God, hmm. I will divide my kingdom and give him. They embark on the journey. On getting there, you know, the prophet told him, go and bathe in the river. You see, it's Jordan. Go and bathe. Ah, this man said, look at, just like this uh, dirty river. He said, uh, we have beautiful streams. In our country, swimming pool, all that. And he did not ask me to go and bath there. This one, he refused. But the servant insisted, do what the prophet has told you. You know? And then Naaman reluctantly complied. And he dipped himself in the river. Oh, the leprosy increased. You know? In a nutshell, at the end of the seven times, he was cleansed. You know? You can now see that's a picture of the, diffic the difficulty people find identifying with brotherhood, identifying with uh, brotherhood. That's why brotherhood is the narrow yeah. gate, you know. So, because of the peculiar nature, the intricacies of this kingdom, even we, even we members of this kingdom, you know, you are not guaranteed. That's why the Father keep on preaching to remind us every day, you know, do this, my children, do this, my children, do this, you know. The Father will tell us, all of you, I have blessed the living spring for you. Go and drink of that water, you know, because he has seen something coming. And all of us, in obedience, will go and drink, you know. Look at the scenario of uh, Egypt. When the Israelites were uh, in Egypt and God wanted to save them, he revealed to them that they should celebrate the Passover feast. That is, kill the lamb. Use the blood and write on the their, doppels. make a mark on their lintel. Yes. All the children of God, Israel, who were there, who carried out that, that instruction, they were sick. The Holy Father told us that even their friends, their neighbors, just like you celebrate a feast in your neighborhood, and non pcs members will come and partake of that feast, they are sick. The father said, even some Israelites, you know, Egyptians, who, uh, some uh, Egyptians, okay. who say, ah, this thing these people are doing, you know, and comply with that this thing. Because the instruction is that when they write, uh, put that mark on their lintel, when the angel of death will come to visit the stubborn Egyptians, you know, and you see that uh, blood on their lintel, you do what? Pass by. You pass over. That's why when we have that song, when I see the blood, I will pass oh, over him. You know? So, even we in this kingdom, you know, the die is cast. Mm. That's why we have the everlasting gospel. gospel. This everlasting gospel is a comp I mean, comprised of all the teachings of the Bible that has been simplified mm. by the supernatural teacher for all generations. Mm. You know? So, we in this kingdom, we are like students. In a school. Okay. And we, it, it is our obligation to do what? To practice the teachings of the Father, 
that will guarantee us our salvation in thank the name you. of our Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Petrarch, um, Innocence, for your explanation. Um, I believe your last <coughs> illustration talking about those who heard about the um, inscription and also followed to do the same thing being safe uh, if i if i want to uh, interpret it in my own way i feel like you're saying that people who also listen to the practice or the teachings of the father who are not members can also be saved so many yes. can so also many be saved are right. wearing white, there, are fasting there, there's yes. a are question there's a are question their heads. sorry there's a question from uh, gladys Onyebo. she says we should throw more light on why those who are not buying the statement that BCS is the last arc of this generation must have come out of the group not destined to be saved, if I can um, restructure this question. Are they the ones that have been um, described by the uh, scripture that they are meant for um, damnation and not destined to be saved? Those people who have refused to accept that brotherhood is not or is the last ark of this um, dispensation, the patriarch? Yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yes. It's, it's, uh, how do I put this question? It is very vital to our salvation. God is not stringent because he knows the weakness of man. And that is why he knows that we are going to be confronted by diverse opinions, opinions held by forefathers, opinions held by supposed influential people in the society. But then the word of God is the power of creation and expects us to be humble enough to listen to it. And when we listen to it, we will find reason to obey. That is why he made us, created us free moral agents. agents. Okay. So why would you not listen to the truth? Like I will just get a, give a testimony of how the father sent us to three months evangelical ministry to the hospital. When we came and knocked our head, a lot of people deserted us. But when the father started to see a patient, seeing other patients doing good things, them. Then they came close and they told us why we did not believe in brotherhood is because our pastors told us certain stories. But what have you seen? You see, God has given you opportunity to exercise your free moral agency. So the other person that is destined as a child of perdition is because he has chosen not to listen to the truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you check the scriptures, you see where the some of the Pharisees, Sadducees, they rejected Christ. But when they saw the wonderful works he was doing, especially that uh, young lawyer, he said, what must I do to gain interest into the kingdom of God? And he was told what to do. Now he knows what to do. But the question is now, are you able to do that? And if you are not able to do that, why are you not able to do that? Now, you choose. But God has given you license to the kingdom of God. That leads us to why God has bestowed so much um, Holy Spirit and power mm. to obey him. Let us see what he said about St. Paul. Okay. He said, why? Jesus said, uh, yes. Uh, the last thing gospel, volume 3, chapter 2, verses you are reading from 92 to 98. It will be fast. Say, why God used Paul more than others? Why did Paul, the apostle, work more than every other apostle? It was because he purified himself. He had no intimacy with any woman. Second. Paul did not eat meat or fish and was holy both in body and in spirit. Thirdly, Paul took neither wine nor strong drink. Fourthly, he had no business with an unbeliever. Because of this, he was holy both in the body and in the spirit. And our Lord Jesus Christ used him as a vessel for great works. This explains why Paul said, 
I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. This you can also find in Philippians chapter 3, verse 8. Now, Paul's free moral agency are dictated to him that this is what I must do. And when Christ revealed himself while he was Saul, when Christ revealed himself and he saw the power of Christ, and he came back and said, Who will now dissuade me from not believing that the Lord Jesus Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords? He has been convinced. So anybody now who is saying, uh, although I've had the truth that is in brotherhood, that God, as he said, has come back with a new name in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 12, and he said that except one is given this name, given the knowledge of this name, no one can know it except the ones he has chosen to. Of course, like my brother said, you have to be baptized and keep yourself clean, just like what qualified uh, Paul. To, 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 to devote his life to God. The name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So you see, nobody now is destined for perdition except if he decides to be a child of perdition because we've had the truth. Now a lot of people are following my pastor. These days you hardly hear in the churches uh, our Lord Jesus Christ said or the scripture said, what you hear is my pastor say, what does your pastor know? If you are a pastor, if your pastor is a true servant of God, and he's advertising Christ. And now that Christ has come. How is it that you don't know that he's there? He's just the, 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 the another Pharisees and Sadducees, oh, the scribes and the call, elders. Please call back again. Yes, yeah. You said what? So that is exactly what is happening now. Any true Christian, any true pastor have heard about the coming, the second coming of God. He's not going to crash land. My brother just mentioned. Uh, for you to see that it's not a partial or sectional God. Mm. It's the God of all creation. If you go to the most holiest place of the Islamic religion in Mecca, you find that place is called Kaaba. You find the name of the God that has come, fulfilling the scriptures in Revelation 3 verse 12, that he will come with a new name. And that new name is O O O. You can get it from Omnipotent, Omnipresent, and Omniscient. Sorry, yeah. I said this call. Yeah, if, okay. The Otherwise, yeah, about okay. 10 places you can. The customer is not, uh, seems like network is having issues. Please okay, forget, right. um, do not forget to call us. And the number to call is plus 2347044882883. Oh, plus 2347044802883. When you call, ensure to move away from your devices and uh, we can hear you better. Yeah. Please. Thank you very much. Now, most of us have heard about the French uh, philosopher, Nostradamus, the man who saw tomorrow. He prophesied over 900 years ago that the end of time will come. And when that time comes, power will revert to the blacks, the Edomites, the black nations, the foolish nation. So he prophesied 900 years ago. And he said that, 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 uh, that, that amongst them, that's a man most reputed and renowned amongst the blacks and he will lead man back to God not through religion but through the gospel of love ye one another and he will make Thursday his holy day and he is the great black king and the, the great black star brethren for those who keep tabs on history this very thing fulfilled a long time ago and in 2015 that same great black star the same great black king fulfilled it in ghana if you go to ghana today in the most important place it is called it is Sorry, called please let's take this okay, call yeah, for okay, continue okay. hello thank you so much for calling your name and where you're calling us from hello we lost the call again. Please call us again. The number to call is on your screen. Ask your questions. I will definitely answer them. Uh, please Just summarize, okay, please. Yeah. yeah. That place is called... Um, I'll get it now. There, this most important place in Ghana. 
Yeah. Where do you go there? You find and that, that, that region, the that's house. the black yeah, star. The yeah, the black star. But I will remember the. Okay. Place. So uh, there you have this same inscription of O O O and the great black star fulfilling that prophecy of Nost Nostradamus. In February. Independence Square. Yeah, Independence Square. Square. Bless you. Yeah. Yeah. In February 2015, mm. the father fulfilled this. Uh, um, um, prophecy of Nostradamus because the supreme king of kings and lord of lords, His Holiness Ulumba Ulumba Ubu, Amen. came to Ghana, came to this same place. I remember when we went on evangelism to please summarize, okay, yeah, yeah. So we we wanted it was on a peace march like this. The mm. inspector general of police said we should have started three months ago. I said, Oh, we came to Nigeria for certain other things because we are apart from Greater Akara Police Station for this. Uh, uh, a supplement to DSS from there to the eternal uh, minister of um, interior and then from there to the uh, inspector general so when we got there they said you guys just started late we can just give you that I say but we are not just coming it is the man that owns Ghana that asked us to come his name is right here in Ghana his name is OOO and he's the great black star by the time we finished this testimony of Nestor we asked him, do you have your currency there? Give us a 50 CD. When we showed it to him, he saw the great blaster, he saw the oh, oh, oh. Beloved children, for you to see the power of the almighty God, he had nothing to argue again. And we were granted, okay. just under five days. Thank you so much, you Patriot, for your explanation. Let's come back to our discussion on the second arc. Um, your Grace, you meant mention about and the end time, the last testament leading us to the end time. And I have a few questions in relation to the end time. I want to um, I want to find out what this particular scripture in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter three verse sixteen, which says, "And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land, in those days saith the Lord." they shall say no more the act of the covenant of the lord neither shall it be neither shall it come to mind neither shall they remember it neither shall they visit it neither shall they be done any more what are your thoughts on this particular scripture is it in relation to the end time well, in the name of our Lord, His Holiness, Olumba, Olumba, Amen. In the power of our Lord, His Holiness, Olumba, Olumba, Amen. Now and forevermore. Amen. I think uh, that, that Jeremiah was one of the prophets of God. And if you go through what the presenter have just read, that the time will come where they will not say, the they will not remember the act of covenant any longer. And if I may lean to that statement, Prominently in those days, in the days of Moses, the act of covenant was like the Sinusure, was that the super house of every Israelite. But like we have earlier said before, the act of covenant then was toast to the left, toast to the right. The temple where the act of covenant was kept, the whole temple had been shattered to shivers in fulfillment of our Lord Jesus Christ. In our last episode, we heard about uh, the act of covenant. Some say it has it has shifted to Egypt. Some say the act has shifted unknown its destination. But the truth about the matter is, why that act, the physical act of covenant here? I'm sure Jeremiah is talking about the physical act of covenant. But you see, following every dispensation, this generation has graduated beyond the physical act of covenant. If you go and read the book of Hebrews chapter 8, our Lord Jesus Christ says that the laws will be written in the heart of every child of God. That no man shall teach fellow man to know God because he shall inscribe the words in our hearts in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, if you also go and read the book of Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 through 6, like Isaiah says, come let us go to the house of God and be taught by God. So in this dispensation, we are not looking at the physical act any longer. 
But this time we are looking at about the spiritual act, the word of God, the tablet of God, the words of God, the laws of God. Jesus, give us a minute to take this call. Yeah. Hello. Thank you hello. so much for calling in. Please, your name and where you're hello. calling us from. Yes, hello. Hello. Please, when you call us back, ensure to move away from your TV or your devices you're watching us with uh, so that we can hear you. Thank you so much. In the name of his holiness, so don't go, don't go, don't go. So this act then is not something, you know, the era of that old act, that dispensation have long passed away. Otherwise, if I'm moving from here, now like those who have been uh, running helter skelter in, in Ukraine, how will you be carrying the ark up and down? And so this ark now, like the father asks us one day. Sorry, can we take yeah. it again? Yeah. I'm really sorry. Yeah. Hello, thank you so much for calling us. Hello? Yes, can you hear us now? Uh, is that a program in uh, Starcross? Yes, this is a program in Starcross. And you are on to Starcross. Can you minimize the volume of your TV device, please? I wanted to program a lot of Star Cross. What am I Star Cross? Please, you're watching the BCS Foreigner and it's on Star Cross television. When you call us in, please endeavor to minimize the volume of your TV device or any device you're watching us with so that we can hear you clearly. Thank you. Your well, case. like we earlier said before, that the Ark of Covenant now, that the Father asks us one day, what I mean by the Father, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, His Holiness, so long, so long, so long. Now, how many are carrying their membership card? You know, one or two persons run away, they're having their physical membership card. You know, but end of the day, you say, your membership card is love. You don't need to be carrying it up and down. The act of covenant now is not that old act. If you read that book of um, uh, Hebrew chapter 8, even our Lord Jesus Christ says, I form a new covenant. And this new covenant is not that the old covenant of Moses, the Mosaic law. It's not that the old issue, God will pray in different dispensation. And in this dispensation, which is the last dispensation, we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In this last dispensation, this is the dispensation, this is the last act where man needs to worship God in spirit and in truth. Because right now, as you are in your house, you will find yourself in the United States of America. You will find yourself in Ukraine. I mean physically. And in such a case, will you be physically be carrying the act up and down? Like some people carry some physical object in their, in their, on their neck as protection. Now, when spiritually, you appear inside the ocean, when you appear in the moon, when you appear in the sun, because just like our Father is omnipotent, so mm -hmm. once the, the God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit imbued inside you, you also become small and omnipotent, small and omnipresent, small and omnipresent. Uh, so do not need the question of carrying the small act up and down. You are the embodiment of the act. Your body is the act. Okay, now so, and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much. What happens after the end time? After the end time? Mm. Well, in the name of our God, the holiness, so lumbo, lumbo, boo. In the power of our God, the holiness, so lumbo, lumbo, boo. Now and forevermore. For the purpose of our audience, go and take Matthew chapter 24 and read to the end. Our Lord Jesus Christ told us that, look, this world shall come to an end. But the Bible says, world without end. Which world shall come to an end? He stated all the, uh, the calamities, all the pestilence, all the vicissitudes, all the things that shall, we shall experience in this end time that the love of many shall wax old. All these things is like using fire. Like we talk about my brother, talk about the cross. This end time is like the cross. It's like a period to separate the sheep from the goat. It's a period to identify the true worshipers of God in spirit and in truth. It's a period to reveal the true nature of the earth. It's a period to for God to manifest his glory. And so he has to face the old, the old world away. And so these are the elements, these are the signs, these are the symptoms, these are the instruments to filter the wheat from the tars, the sheep from the goat. Once the wheat and the tars have been filtered, 
This old world, our Lord Jesus Christ declared on the, on the cross that it is finished. The works of the flesh, the Armageddon war, shall face all the works of the flesh and graduate us into a new heaven and a new, a new earth where customs, traditions, beliefs, all kind of the old wine in the old wine skin will be faced away. A man now shall graduate. Man now which is a new wine skin with a new wine. Which is the everlasting gospel. Which is the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ with a new name. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. His holiness, Olumbo, Olumbo. Shall man graduate us into a new world order. A world of peace. A world of serenity. A world of joy. A world where there are no issues. Prosperity, good health, everything is imperfect. This is what we call heaven. Amen. Now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much for that point. The new heaven and the new earth. Um, Your Grace, Archbishop Joseph D.K., I would want to know if this new heaven, if that is if you agree with Archbishop um, Eta John Bisson, but if and if you do agree with him, because he's actually making a lot of sense, uh, we are getting a bit of clarity as to what is going to happen after the end time, the supposed end, end time. So if there will be a new heaven and new earth, will that be in the same atmosphere we find ourselves at the moment? And let me refer to the scripture of Daniel chapter 2 verse 44, which says, God will establish a kingdom that shall not be destroyed. From our perception about the enter, it means that everything will be destroyed. And if Brotherhood of the Christ is that, is that kingdom that would not be destroyed, what will happen to it after the end time? Will it be transferred to the new heaven or the new earth? Just explain um, what will happen, even to us as humans. Thank you very much. You know, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 49, the scriptures made a very wonderful statement. He said, as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Meaning there's going to be a transformation, a, a spiritual transformation of the soul of man unto righteousness, because we are not dealing with the flesh here. The scriptures say the soul that sin it, it shall die. In that transformation, man shall be transformed. And from verse 50 of that first Corinthians, from chapter 15, he said, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, meaning that not all life shall be destroyed, not all creature will die. Say, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. From this corruption, corruptible, so for this corruptible, sorry, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this incorruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, they shall be brought past the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. So the promise is this. The father said he has come to reform us. What is that reformation? It's a spiritual reformation, a transformation, because the mind is the master and the attitude of man is everything. When the mind is reformed, they said, as a man thinketh, so is he. If your thought is preponderant of an evil, you will always be evil continually. And if your thought is preponderant on good, you'll be good continually. And the father told us that when you want to know the true meaning of God, the true meaning of God is good. Sorry, so, your grace, let me just interrupt you a bit and take this call. Okay. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much Thank you for, so much calling. for calling. Your name, your name or where you're calling, calling us from. Us from. Thank you so Thank much, you Sister so Gladys. Please, Please proceed, proceed with your question. question. Thank you very much. I'm enjoying the discussion. Actually, I don't want to say that a lot of people have this wrong teaching that this year is not of God because the founders of God's church them wrong teaching and said in the book that the Messiah is expected to be going to come. 
how can this thing be brought back to the right part of teaching? Because yesterday I watched on YouTube, the woman was teaching her members, telling, calling the name of the mother, saying that there was a person who came to her church there, and had the placard that was on my phone, placard on the ink and car on the back. But what was this thing? Because they do not have sound teaching, and that's why they're in this case. So they should tell us. Talk more because not only the well, children are watching this program at this moment, even long business members are also watching. Okay. okay. More like she's going to start coming back that this year is the last expected kingdom first act of the present generation. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Well, Thank, you. Well, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, continue, um, Your Grace. Great. All right, so like we were saying, he has come with the teachings because the mind of the man, like the father told us one time, everything borders on attitude. And what drives attitude is what is in our heart. They say, as out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And as a man thinketh, so is he. So he has come with that word to reform us. That is that transformation. He said in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, with the baptism of righteousness, he activates the Holy Spirit in us, gives us the spiritual capacity to understand, to comprehend, and then by his grace, give us the ability to put them into practice. So the part of rectitude, which is teaching us so that when the day of judgment shall come, he said, the man, the children will be found worthy to enter because the first thing is to be able to gain access into that presence of grace. When we are found worthy and we are given entrance, then we can enjoy the grace that comes after the great tribulation. Because all that is written like Brother Tak quoted in Matthew 24, he said, all shall come to pass, even from verse, uh, when he told us, say, there shall be, because iniquity shall abound, from verse 10, he said, and then shall many, be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So the process is already there. Iniquity will increase. There will be so many things that happen, will happen, so many terrible things. The profane will become they, I mean, they, they would regard it as holy and sacred. And the sacred things will be despised. But for the children of God who now follow the teachings of the Father, endure the tribulation and the pain and everything at the conclusion of all things, they shall be saved and they shall enjoy the glory. This has nothing to do with religion or race or tongue or tribe or church or pastor because God is love and God is good and his word endures forever independent of man opinion ideology in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, uh, Your Grace, for that explanation. Thank you for throwing light as to what will happen after the end time. All right, let's take the question of Sister Gladys, um, the patriarch, uh, Christ Shepherd Innocence. How can we convince, if that is the right word to use, people who have not accepted this, although we have said it before, but I think she needs more emphasis. Um, yes, emphasis to be laid on how we can prove that Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is the lack, uh, last act of salvation. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. you see, um, Brotherhood of the Cross and Star as the new kingdom of God on it is the last apostle for mankind. Meanwhile, people are not aware. Taking a cue from the recent uh, peace march we went uh, in back uh, in uh, Ondo State, one uh, pastor from uh, CCC, that is Celestial Church, Church of Christ, Christ. he came to say, Obama, he says that people are not aware uh, of the presence of the kingdom of God on a brotherhood of the cross and star. You know, he was so fascinated with the packaging of the, the peace match and the presentation, you know, and the father's uh, gospel. And you know, he said we should do more to embark on evangelism, to tell people about the kingdom. I think 
that is no longer connected with what the scripture said in uh, Matthew chapter 24 that the end shall not come until this gospel is taken to all the parts of the world. So that is the uh, task ahead of us, you know, to evangelize and continue to evangelize because until the tree is falling, the axe will not take. So what should we say in the process of evangelizing? How can we convince people? We are going to evangelize. How we can we convince going, them? We have a lot of articles of trade in the kingdom. Number one is the father and the words of um, divine teachings, his practical life, you know, the contents of the kingdom is what we are going to tell the people, you know. We are going to tell the people about the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the, the long expected, you know. We are going to tell them about the long expected kingdom. It has come, it has been established on earth. We are going to tell them about the quality eh, of the Father. We have a song that says, who is like unto the Father, you know. That anybody who is like unto leader Olumba Olumba of who should raise his uh, hands up. You know, hand up. You know. We'll tell them about a being who, uh, who is never angry. For instance, every 14th of February, every year, we celebrate the power of love. The power of love. We celebrate the Father's uh, challenge to the whole world that if anybody will make him angry, who cause him to be irritated or angry, he will give him a fabulous price. And up to now, nobody has been able to offend the father, to make the father angry. While the world celebrate val uh, Valentine, Valentine, we celebrate the power of love. We celebrate the father as the love personified, as the peace personified, as every virtue of God personified. So we have a lot of content, and that is why the essence of uh, the Star Cross uh, television, because the Star, Star Cross television, like uh, during that uh, peace match, the non members who came to present their papers, by the time they listened to the presentation of uh, the father, that is, we have been looking for peace. Now let us look for peace in uh, the, 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 other, uh, the other parts, you know, people don't uh, know about, you know. It was very interesting. The father used uh, one of our brothers, Petrake Oga, Osim, to present uh, that paper. Number one. Then the people were so patient to listen to the songs. The Abba Squires came out, you know, and present the songs alone in brought out their evangelism. So we have a lot of contents to okay. tell the world about the kingdom. Thank that you so much. brotherhood is the last bus stop. Thank you so much. Here, uh, because, the, sorry, the okay. scripture says that in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you know, that when the perfect one comes, all the imperfections okay. are gone. That's why, brother, we don't play drums, we don't beat bands, you know. We don't burn candles. We don't burn we don't candles burn because incense. all those things are practices of angels, you know, Elementary to worship. deceive men. So the perfect one has come with the perfect way of worshiping God in spirit and in, in truth. truth. Thank you so much, the patriarch, for that one. Um, this is how far we can come for um, um, this topic, the second arc. I believe that to some extent we have exhausted most of the questions that our audience possibly may have concerning this topic. And this topic was to establish the fact that, and to put clarity to the fact that brotherhood is the second arc of salvation. So if you need to get more understanding about where we are coming from, leading us to this point where we made this strong declaration, you can feel free to watch the previous episode. Let me take briefly the comments we have on our YouTube channel. We have from Gladys Onyebo, kudos to Starcross TV for keeping us abreast of events and issues around the world. Emmanuel Israel says, perfect peace of the Almighty Father, dear beloved. Then we have from Joy Dambo, she says, well done, Sister Queen Sam. I said I wasn't going to miss the part two of this topic because it is very interesting. Kudos to our guest speakers too. Blessing Benedict says, perfect peace, all kudos to Starcross TV. Easy Garment says, thank you, Father. 
And then we have from Gladys Onyebo saying, BCS is indeed the last hope of mankind. This generation is fortunate to witness his reign and glory. Jude Asaluka is commending he, the patriarch Christ Shepherd, Innocent Omini, for his explanation. Maurice Katongo from Zambia says, We thank the Father. I am watching uh, from Zambia. Wonderful topic from the Father. Thank you all for your wonderful comments, your questions, all those who have called in from the previous um, episode where we had the part one of the topic, the second act. I really appreciate you and please continue to watch our programs on Starcross Television. Continue to support us with your monthly and annual support to our account details that will be displayed shortly on your screen. Continue to support, continue to watch all our programs and thank you so much for all your contributions, our wonderful guest speakers, His Grace Ash Bishop and um, Joseph DK, the Patriarch Christ Shepherd Innocent Omini, the Patriarch Chikamaka, and His Grace John Eta Bissell. Until we come your way again, same time, same channel on Wednesday next week, 6 p.m. Nigerian time on the BCS Foreigner. I am Queen Sam. Please remain blessed and stay happy. Bye for now. <laughs>